Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We are already mightily blessed. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Isn't that true? Yes. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Pastor Art. Thank you, Pastor Castellanos. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here together with you and these wonderful people here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I like to start... I like to start straight away, okay, because I don't just have to beat the devil, I've got to beat the time. <laughs> I believe with all of my heart that something fantastic is going to happen here right now. In the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. The old shall dream dreams. I'm one of them. But I tell you, you can't just keep dreaming. You've got to wake up and do what you have dreamt about. Amen. That's why I'm active preaching the word of God. Let me, I, I have to tell you a little story that will make sense at the end when I come to my message. And it's very important, it was a key event in my life. My background is German. My father was a German pastor. So I grew up with the gospel. Thanks be to God. A godly home. <laughs> Wonderful. I got saved when I was a boy of nine. When I was a boy of ten, Jesus called me to one day preach the gospel in Africa. When I was eleven, he filled me with the Holy Spirit and prepared me for the teenage years. As straight as an arrow, I only had one thing in my heart. I want to serve God. I want to serve Jesus. I'm willing to put my life on the altar for the salvation of souls. So at, I went to Bible college in Great Britain, spent a few years there, and then the day of my graduation came, and now it starts. The day of my graduation came. The college was in Wales, and I had to go to Germany by train. In those days, we didn't go by plane. And I thought, wow, when I pass through London, I want to see something, I want to do some sightseeing all by myself. I arrived in London. I couldn't join a group, poor group. I had no money. But I had a couple of coins. So, they said I can buy a ticket, a one-day ticket, and w go with any bus I want in the city of London. So, I just had enough money for that bus ticket. And I got into the first bus, I had no idea where it was going to. 
But it, we rolled through London. There was a, 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 a station, bus station. I just changed buses. I didn't know what direction it went. Didn't matter. I wanted to see Westminster Abbey and I wanted to see Buckingham Palace. And after a few hours, I felt I need to move my legs. I had been sitting for so long. I got off the bus and walked into a residential area. As I walked, I passed the house. And there was a big name plate outside. It read, George Jeffries. What, I said. George Jeffries was the man who brought the gospel of signs and wonders to Great Britain. Can it be that it is him? Ah, I said, I'm sure he's already dead a hundred years ago. Ah, no, it's not him. And there are so many Jeffreys in London. And even more Georges. <laughs> ah, no, this is just a... But the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, go and find out. You have time anyway. Yes, I have time. So, I walked through the front garden, went to the front door, and pushed the bell. A dear lady opened. I said, madam, is this the house of George Jeffreys? This firebrand evangelist who brought the gospel of signs and wonders to the British Isles. She said to me, yes. Wow. I said, may I please see him? She said, no. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say, but that lady filled the whole door frame I couldn't pass her but when she said no I heard a deep voice from the inside let him come in I tell you I don't know how I got in but in I was I saw him come down from his staircase very slowly. He looked to me very old and frail. He had put on his best clothes. I thought he had wanted to visit the Queen of England. When I saw him, I shook hands with him and I started to talk. My name is Reinhard Bonke. I've just graduated from Bible College. And, uh, and God has called me to preach the gospel in Africa. He just listened. After a while, he laid his hand on, on one of my shoulders. He fell on the carpet on his knees pulled me down with him and started to bless me and bless me and bless me <laughs> the glory of God was there half an hour later I got up from the ground I walked to the door, I said goodbye, and I staggered out on the, on the road back to my bus stop again. And I kept saying, Lord, I will never understand how I arrived at this place. The man wasn't on my mind. 
I didn't even know you were still on earth. <coughs> How did I get here, Lord? And the Lord spoke to me, don't worry, Reinhardt, he said. The Holy Spirit was your bus driver. <laughs> ah. I would have never found it to a posh organized tour, but I got something there. I got something there. That night I left for Germany. My father waited for me at the Hamburg railway station to pick me up. We talked a little while, and then my father said, Reinhard, I just heard from London. George Jeffries has died. I said, what? I just saw him. I just saw him. The Holy Spirit took me to him. And then I knew I was the last one he saw. I knew why he had dressed as if he was going to the queen. And all that puzzle came together and I could see that picture. The Lord connects generation with generation. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is wonderful. It really is. Now, I believe there will be connections here tonight, this morning. Connections you would never dream of. I never knew I would get that, such a connection. Who wouldn't have wished it? And I didn't even know it. I opposed it. I said, he's already dead. I tell you, God buries his workers, but his work is going on. <laughs> that is the tomb inscription on John Wesley I saw in Westminster Abbey. God buries his workers, but his work carries on. Now, my theme right here, right now, is the last lap. The last lap. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? The last Lab. Mark chapter 16, verse 19 and 20, that's all I will read. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they, that's the disciples, went out, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs and you say, Amen. Amen. You see, between verse 18 and verse 20, was Acts chapter 2 chronologically. They went out filled with the Holy Spirit. And the first thing that I see here is that they took the initiative. They took the initiative. They went forth. 
They didn't just sit and pray. They went forth. They were not just sitting in their sofas like anointed couch potatoes. They got on the road and they went forth. Today, most unfortunately, lots of Christians are waiting for revival and praying the whole life for revival and then their children do it and their children do it and their children do it but revival doesn't seem to come there are books that tell us why revival tarries I can tell you why do you want to know because there are so many books that tell us why. The Bible does not say it. The Bible does not say it. Oh, then these people say, have told me many times, oh, my dear brother, we are waiting for God. Waiting for God? Since Pentecost, the traffic light switched from red to green. That is the sign to go forth. And not just sit around they say oh i don't want to run ahead of god what do you really think you can do that <laughs> who can run faster than god you know in germany we have the autobahn which is speed free uh, national, I, uh, what you call here, inter, uh, interstate. But there is no little speed limit. Gee, I love it. <laughs> they said to me, don't go faster than 100 miles, Reinhardt. But you are going 100 and at 100 miles they told me the angels are going leaving your car I said at 150 they are coming back because they also love speed and God loves that we respond to the feeling of the Holy Spirit and that we start moving amen let me just say this revival as we call it is not a Bible word revival is caused by preaching of the gospel by preaching of the gospel that gets the Holy Spirit going when we act God acts with us but we act first that's why we need faith man I tell you I don't want to travel on the slow lane I'm a fast lane guy. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Now. Proclamation. Preaching the gospel. 
declaring the word of God always comes before confirmation. You see, if you tell me nothing, I can confirm nothing. Well, when can God confirm his word? When it first is proclaimed. We proclaim the word of God. It is the gospel, it is the power of God unto salvation. Are you happy? And when we preach the gospel, We've got the key to every prison cell in our hands. And it is under the direction of the Holy Spirit that we turn that key in the lock and declare liberty in Jesus' name. Amen. It's for all sinners. In Germany, we had a, an old pastor who always preached in prisons. And when they say, until he died, he preached in the prisons. And when he went to the prison to preach, he got the inmates together and this is how he started. Beloved crooks and criminals. Somehow I think this man understood the love of God. Because Jesus did not come to shame sinners. He came to save sinners. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word of God is not mad news. It is glad news. What struck me as an evangelist is this. The Lord never threatened sinners. He never did. He didn't come to threaten sinners. But he came to warn them. You threat, threaten an enemy, but you warn a friend. That's how it works. I say it again. You threaten an enemy. But you warn a friend. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next. To preach the word of God is to deal, to handle the dynamite of the gospel. It's something like gunpowder. We learned at school in Germany that gunpowder uses the chemicals potassium, nitrate, sulfur, and carbon. Hmm. So let's say one on, you are short on one of those substances those four substances but you can see wow in mother's kitchen is some flour it just looks like it so you add that look alike ingredient okay it just looks like gunpowder 
but there is one difference it doesn't explode we have got to preach the original gospel for the original results if we want the apostles results we have got to preach what they preached hallelujah so when we declare the gospel come on preach the gospel don't preach ideas you pick up from books don't just go to Google go to the Word of God there's power there is power and it works wonder working power glory to God glory to God you see Jesus can only be what you preach him to be if you don't preach that Jesus saves he can't save if you don't preach that Jesus heals he cannot heal but preach him as a savior as a healer as the baptizer with the Holy Spirit and with fire and he can be just that he can be just that amen hallelujah 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 there are no restrictions in the kingdom of God when I was in South Africa and I had for the first time in my life 75,000 people in one meeting I was so overwhelmed 75,000 people. <laughs> we saw mighty signs and wonders. And I said to my wife, Honey, I think this is God's maximum. What a terrible unbelief. <laughs> but from that day, the next crusade I had for the first time in my life, I saw 150,000 people in one meeting. <clears throat> my counselors were here around in the front waiting to handle the people that would come forward. So I said to them, those who have just now received Jesus as their Savior, come forward for counseling. And then the people were flocking. And I looked and I saw my counselors run for their lives. Oh, I wish to see that in America. Satan is the eternal loser. You know why the devil suffers from brain damage? Because Jesus crushed his head. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not afraid of the devil. The devil is afraid of me. Yeah. Ha! 
Hallelujah. Jesus is with us. We don't need to defend Jesus. You don't need to defend a lion. Just open the cage. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah! Oh! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, when I came to Jesus, He shifted my likes and my loves. Because before I got saved, I liked what Jesus hated. And I hated what Jesus loved. But that day, it just switched. I still love what Jesus loves. And who Jesus loves. Sinners for whom he died to save. And I hate what Jesus hates. Sin and the works of the devil. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We are here. How many of you want to get that fire of the Holy Spirit? Amen. amen. You see that fire... is not a copy from a man. As I travel the world, many people say to me, please, Reinhardt, lay your hands on my head. I want your anointing. I said, wait a minute. Do you think I give you my anointing and then I go home without? I love you very much, but not that much. And the truth is, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is never copied. Our God is not a duplicator. He is a creator. He only produces originals. And not copies. If you want to know how God is, look into nature. And you will see, you will see that there are seven and a half billion people. And not two of them have the same fingerprints. Not two. Look at the leaves. They all have a slightly different structure. And do you really think when it comes to the anointing, that he has a conveyor belt. <laughs> I don't sit on a conveyor belt. I'm filled with the original Holy Spirit. <laughs> and when the fire falls here this morning, I'll tell you what happened. Every one of you is getting an original anointing. An anointing 
that fits nobody else because your flame carries your name it is as personal as that no copies God's mind is too fruitful to start copying he only works with originals and nobody can serve God exactly like you that's why you are very very much needed if you believe it shout amen hallelujah I must tell you this and that's why I come back to the beginning my story with George Jeffries when I met him I was 21 now I'm 78 he was 70 when he died I don't promise to die tonight. <laughs> has nothing, that has nothing to do with what God is doing. Amen? But I saw how God connected people. And if you have that desire to be connected, you will travel as of today in a river of liquid fire because Jesus baptizes into the Holy Spirit and with fire John baptized in Jordan's water Jesus didn't baptize in water but he baptized into the Holy Spirit fire and when he dips you and then lifts you can you imagine you in the fire and the fire in you you didn't just get a smear of fire you will get soaked and when you leave this place the fire will drip from you and all your footsteps are filled with fire and every devil in America will know the anointed of the Lord of Amen. Amen. I tell you because it is the truth. I have witnessed together with my team how in Africa in one meeting in one meeting one million people received the power of the Holy Spirit and began to preach or uh, speak in new tongues I tell you that is a steamroller the devil can put nothing against he is under our feet. We are more than conquerors. May I please finish something? Just hang on, please. I need to finish something.
I've been running my race. I have installed a young man to continue with my ministry. His name is Daniel Colenda. He's doing so well. Continuing exactly there where I left it. Right now they are in Congo Brazzaville for a gigantic crusade. I get the daily reports. Well, and I can see the hunger of your heart and the longing of your heart. You cannot just say, you know, some people, they get a calling every meeting. Every meeting, but the calling never starts going. Now, when you receive the fire, my goodness, go to Macy's and buy yourself a suitcase. <laughs> Amen. When the Lord says, I go with you. Then you first have to go, and then he goes with you. Jesus doesn't sleep with sleepers. He doesn't sit with sitters. He works with workers and goes with goers. Something has got to happen. Or you're wasting your time. I'm in a, I'm in a race. What is that sport again? Stafette, that is passed on. Huh? Relay, relay race. Ah, sorry. This is Andrew, my personal assistant. You know. And my dear wife is over there. Annie, we are married for 53 years. Imagine we are running a relay race with a button. Team against team. Team against team. And that button is being passed on. It's being passed on. It's being passed on. And as we run, as I run, in Hebrews, we read about the cloud of witnesses. The cloud of witnesses. These are those who are, have already completed the race and they watch us from the cloud of witnesses. Those witnesses. From the cloud of witnesses. Amen. And as I'm running my race with my... Hmm? With my baton. <laughs> it is as if I hear voices. And I look up. And I see those witnesses looking down on us and shouting, Faster! 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 And almost out of breath, I shout back. And I say, Why should we run faster? Then you yourself run! And the answer that comes from heaven is this one. Because it is the last lap! Jesus is coming!
Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did the clock stop here? Did the clock stop here? Huh? It's going. All right, I want now to pray with you. I'll tell you how, how we do it in Africa. Okay, listen, listen. Hundred thousand, hundreds of thousand are ready to receive it. We can call nobody forward. But we accept the power of the Holy Spirit because we need Him. He comes to us only because we need Him. Not because we are perfect. But because we are not perfect, our weakness does not repel the Holy Spirit. Our weakness attracts Him because he's, He is our helper. He comes to help the weak. He loves us. We always think we are not worthy. The Holy Spirit doesn't make us worthy, but the blood of Jesus. When the blood of Jesus has made us worthy, the Holy Spirit comes for the best and the worst. Are you ready? And then I tell the people this, and this is what we will do. We stand there, Close our eyes, not now, I'm just describing it. <laughs> and then we lift our hands. We open our spirit for the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is here. We don't need to pull him down from heaven. He's here. And then in Africa, you can pray what you want. But in Africa, I said, let's pray in one accord. I want everybody to praise the Lord. Hallelujah means praise the Lord. So please, we will shout our hallelujah from earth to heaven. As Honolulu has never heard. And our praise attracts the Holy Spirit like a lightning conductor. The lightning! And then the lightning hits you. And then you have to go for Jesus. But don't just shout one hallelujah and then Keep praising the Lord and you will break out in new tongues. Some of you will prophesy. Some of you will see visions. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Close your eyes, please. Lift your hands. And now we shout our
Kora Boshi Fasala Labati Kandaya Elolo Boshiya Farapakasi Oh hallelujah Oh hallelujah I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Oh, Shanala Botorra Kosia. And the Lord says, You now will lay your hands on the sick, and they will recover, saith the Lord. Your lips will speak the word of God. And it will work. When you go through fire, it will not singe you. Through water, it will not drown you. So go forth in my name, says the Lord. I have a great, great calling and work for you. In Jesus' name. Come on, thank Him for it. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Are you happy? Pastor Art. Oh, can I say one more thing? I, I, I wrote this book. I'm not a salesman. But I want you to read this book. And you, you have more than a suitcase to go and serve the Lord. This is something... Of my, as if it is my legacy I know if you read this it will come to you through the Holy Spirit you will get secrets of my ministry it will bless you unfortunately I haven't got many books here to sell but you can get them from Amazon <laughs> and if you want it in the uh, uh, audio Go to Audiocom and you'll get it cheaper there. God bless you. Uh, Reinhard, do you mind? That's such a, a powerful book. And the other day you told us a very simple story of the book at dinner. Yeah, and I think it's very prophetic why God had you write that title. Yeah. Do you mind taking a moment and sharing what that title's all about and what you saw? Yeah, the title is The Holy Spirit. Are we flammable or fireproof? <laughs> and I want everyone to burn for Jesus in the fire of the Holy Spirit one woman said to me when I left the meeting she came running she said I've got a demon sit here I've got a demon sit here I said are you uh, born again she said yes wow I was amazed and suddenly it struck me I said to her, flies can only sit on a cold stove. And they love to sit on a cold stove for a long time. Get the fire of the Holy Spirit inside. 
Now, imagine you are a hot stove. Here comes the fly. Here the fly senses the heat. to have you here and for all of you that were up there and that couldn't get down did you receive it it's been a real honor I know my pastor has been honored to have you in Bogota and uh, my pastor recommended that you be here with him and so we are so honored to have your your caliber And I mean that because, um, you know, think about what was ignited here. The world is going to change, Reinhardt, because you let, you released it, and God did a creative miracle in us today. Amen. Would you please give Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke a great big appreciation? God is so good, amen.